Okay, so I've been asked to make a video about uh, Moore's Law, Huang's Law and Cloud Computing. So let's try this a different way. This is a question which I'm going to ask you to do. And let's say that it would be out of six months. Okay, what are the factors that have contributed to the widespread adoption of the AI and how they and how do they enable its development? Pause the video, give it a go now. So basically what we're asking is, what is responsible for the growth of AI? What are the enablers of AI? And there are three different enablers which have allowed that to happen. One of them is called Moore's Law. What that is all about is it's the growth in the speed of computers due to the CPU itself. So every one and a half years, up until around 2010, the CPU inside of computers, so this is your um, motherboard and you've got your RAM, you've got your CPU here, which is responsible for processing instructions. This has got faster, so it can process instructions and work with RAM really, really quickly every year and a half. That is because of the semiconductors which are within the CPU itself. At the time, up until 2010, they would improve every one year and a half in terms of power. That has allowed more complex algorithms to be run. That has allowed things such as speech recognition. So for example, if I was using Google and you've got in Google search, you can search like something like what blah 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 you can type it in or you could use a microphone button so you press a microphone button you talk and it types it in for you that is because of moore's law moore's law better computing power better computing power more complex algorithms such as speech recognition unfortunately um we're really at its limits in terms of transistors which are inside a computer so these transistors that their maximum so it's harder to decrease the size of them, they're already absolutely tiny. So computing power has actually slowed down. So Moore's law has become more redundant, but Moore's law is responsible for this aspect. So how would I answer this? I would talk about this bit, about the growth due to Moore's law because of the fact about increasing computer power, etc., which has led to algorithms, deep learning, which has led to uh, speech recognition, etc. It's also led to things like Google, knowing what you've been looking at, etc. at a basic level. But we can also mention that it has actually slowed down because of the size of transistors that are already very, very small, which means that the increase in computing power has slowed since 2010. So that is Moore's law. Then we've got Huang's law, which is basically the development of a GPU. So inside your computer, you've got the CPU, which affects performance. You've got the RAM, which can affect performance. You've got your hard disk drive, which can affect performance. And you've got the GPU, which can affect performance. Most games will be using a combination of both of these things. GPU will play a huge role. Now, GPU, Huang's law, is basically saying that GPUs are developing faster now than CPUs. That is because GPUs can run parallel um, calculations, parallel tasks. CPU can only do one task at a time, so it fetches, decodes, and executes an instruction. So it's pretty limited. Whilst GPU can do multiple of these at the same time, which allows really high complex games to be played, allows video processing, image processing to be done, and both image and video processing, like facial recognition, etc., play a huge role in AI. Now, basically, by allowing parallel, we're reducing the bottleneck of what traditional processors would have to go under. Originally, as it's one at a time, imagine you had a doctor's surgery, so you had a doctor there and you had one person at a time lining up to get in. That would take time, but imagine if a doctor could see multiple people at once. The bottleneck, as in the queue, will die down. And that is basically the GPU in itself. The GPU improves the processing, which reduces the bottleneck, which then allows 
more advanced AI to take place, so taking advantage of the performance. Whereas CPU, if we want to improve CPU, we would simply add more transistors, but we're tiny at the moment. For GPU, it won't work like that. For GPU, it's about the techniques, the algorithms, the methods of how it works. And because it can be pushed really, really hard, it allows for more advanced things to take place, which means it's got more room to grow than CPU, which is all about just adding more transistors where we can't really anymore. Based on that, GPU allows faster training of deep learning, which again, allows for higher accuracy of AI systems. So it's faster to train deep learning models. You can have deep learning models in uh, CPU, so in Moore's law, but they're limited and it takes a long time to train. It takes a long time to train because it can only deal one process at a time. And even that is, the speed of this process being facial code executed is as limits because of the transistors. GPUs come along and say, eh, this isn't as important anymore. We can run multiple instructions at the same time in parallel using the advanced techniques. These techniques can be improved even further, so there's room for us to grow. So we're great for things like image and video processing, which is vital for certain AI systems. No more bottleneck. Happy days. So that is Moore's law, and that is also Huang's law. We've discussed both of these. But there is one more factor, there's one more enabler for AI. And then we've got what's going on today with chat AI, cloud computing. So cloud computing basically allows huge data to be accessed by our AI system by using cloud computers, virtual servers, etc. So you've got chat GPT. It's got multiple servers which handles all the processes. Every time we use chat PT to say, like, do my homework, it will have to access these servers. These servers allow loads of processing to take place in between them. where data is shared, but also the processing power is shared. So they all work together to create one supercomputer. They share the power, the processing power. So this basically allows me and you and loads of other people to interrogate that means question the chat AI. It will basically then, using its huge data sets which are shared, allow things to be stored and processed on these different servers, which basically then means that these deep learning models which are done, the hardware doesn't have to be so expensive because we don't have to buy one supercomputer, we buy lots of mini computers, so to speak, and we put them together to create one massive computer, but that can only be done by using the internet, by using cloud. Now, it means that all over the world we could be accessing the system, people in the UK, people in Spain, and we could be training this service, such as ChatGPT, which allows quicker growth as well. More people using it, faster growing, more powerful, it could be accessed by many different types of devices, so for example, smartphones, etc using this data here. So it, remember, ChatGPT is just one website. There are many different websites and apps being developed which will use ChatGPT service. So for example, Google Spreadsheets are starting to use ChatGPT. Microsoft Bing, which is a different service altogether, which is going to be using the service. They're all going to be connected together using cloud. So the search engine of Bing is going to be using ChatGPT AI. Don't ask me why, don't ask me how yet, because that's to be seen, but it will be. So, fast internet connectivity, huge data sets, sharing resources, i.e. the processors, makes one giant computer which allows data to be interrogated, training to be done really fast on powerful hardware because it's all joined together, but for not that much money. It allows it to be accessed all over the world as well, meaning that training can be done faster and accessed by more people.
So it's a combination, folks, of the enablers of AI. Let me just delete this. The enablers of AI are going to be Moore's law without our CPUs having development in their transistors. The processing power on the disk to P power wouldn't have increased, but it has done. Whilst yes, granted it stagnated at 2010, it is growing still slightly, but not as much as before, and it's allowed for Crown's law to come into place with the GPU, which is parallel, processing more powerful, etc., which we've already discussed. And then through cloud, it's basically allowing more storage because of the combination and to have loads of computers <coughs> sharing their own CPU and GPU together, so combined to make powerful, super powerful computers. And also because it's on the internet, global accessibility, which increases training as well, speed of training. So in terms of power, it goes like this. Moore's law, Huang's law, cloud. Cloud is basically a combination of these two, you could argue. Huang's law, faster than and more powerful than Moore's law because of the parallel processing, etc. It's not limited by the transistors. It's the techniques which are used instead. So it allows for more deep learning for video and image. Moore's law is used, um, was the original starter, you can say for like voice recognition, etc. But without Huang's law, we wouldn't be able to go into like video surveillance, etc. image recognition. Without cloud, we wouldn't be able to have our chat GPT today.